everyone. Uh, my name is Emily and I work at the Bridgewater Public Library and I'm going to be showing you how to make a folk art flag out of corks. And you can see my example right here. So um, I'm going to let you know that I did get the idea out of this book from the Bridgewater Public Library called DIY Wine Corks, 35 Cute and Clever Cork Crafts, written and illustrated by Melissa Averinos, and she's actually from Cape Cod, so she's a local person, and there's a lot of great ideas in here. Um, this is one of the simplest ones, so I thought I would start with this one, and it came out pretty good. So, uh, let's get started. So, the first thing, obviously, is you need corks. So, you need quite a bit of corks. You might not have all these corks at your house. I've been collecting corks for a while. I just like the way they look. I keep them in a glass uh, vase and just throw them in whenever I have finished a wine bottle. So I have quite a bit of corks. Uh, we also had a wedding in our family um, a couple of years ago and collected quite a bit of corks from the wedding. But you may not have all these corks. So there's a few different ways you can get corks. You can um, order them online. That's one way. Uh, you can ask friends and family if they've got corks hanging around. Um, you can also try restaurants or liquor stores that do wine tasting. Um, they will collect corks sometimes from that. So there's some options. Or you can just start collecting them and you might have to wait a while until you can do one of these. Or you can do a smaller version. So um, that's the idea on the corks. Uh, I want to let you know also that I used all natural corks. Um, as you know, some of the corks now, let me see if I can show you one, is the, I think this is one, um, the rubbery type. So I used all the natural ones because of the dyeing. Um, I think the natural corks take the dye better. Um, but the, there is the rubber ones also. You could try them. I did not. I just picked out the natural corks. So that's the corks. Let's see what else we need to talk about. You also need um, dye. So writ dye is what I used. Um, red and blue. Um, came out kind of a bluishy purple. Of course, this is not a real flag, so you're kind of not doing an official flag. So you you can do the style you want. Um, I rearranged it first before I actually glued things down um, and this is the arrangement I liked but you may do something different. It's a folk art flag so it doesn't have to be official. Of course it doesn't have the correct number of stars which we're not really doing stars but just the blue and then the red um, and then the white stripes of course are just the natural corks that we didn't dye. So you need red dye and you need blue dye. You can use liquid dye or you could use powder dye. Um, I just used as much as I could um, to get as dark as as dark a color as I could. Um, I used a disposable foil pan to dye the corks in. Uh, you can use anything you want. Of course, it stains, so this was a great way where I could just throw it away after I dyed them. Um, I dyed them overnight. The longer you keep the corks in the dye, of course, the darker the color. So I did dye them overnight. Um, so that's, so we have our corks, we have our dye. Um, you need a black foam board. So this is the piece I started on. I liked working on a larger piece. Um, gave me space to kind of put the corks down on. Um, you can buy something smaller. You're gonna cut it down afterwards, of course, but um, I liked working on a bigger piece. And this size is, let's see, I have it on the back here. It is 22 inches by 28 inches. Um, of course, it's smaller than the flag itself. So you need that, black foam board. Um, you're gonna need a, a, a utility knife or a Zacto knife, whatever, because of course afterwards you're gonna cut off the remaining black foam board. And if you're going to hang it, you'll need a pitcher hanger. 
to put on the back. I have not put one on the back yet. Uh, I believe I'm just gonna lean mine up on my mantle, but you could do whatever you want with the back. You can put, of course, a picture hanger on the back. So those are the supplies you need, very simple. Um, you're also gonna need, of course, a glue gun and um, glue sticks. Make sure you have plenty so you don't run out. So I have found that you don't need to put a lot of glue on the corks, they're so light. Um, I was being very heavy handed with the glue in the beginning and then I found that no, you just need a little bit of glue. Um, the corks are light and they stay on very well without a lot of glue. So, um, like I said, I arranged the corks first. I actually took a picture of it with my phone so I would know how I wanted, to, wanted it to look. Um, so I didn't have to kind of guess how many stripes I wanted. Um, it was all there it's for me to refer to, so that's what I did. Um, you can do what you want with that. Um, I thought this would be a nice time to kind of show it with Flag Day coming up and the 4th of July. So let me tell you how many corks I needed for this particular one, which the size of this is about 26 inches by 13. So 26 by 13. For this cork, I, uh, cork flag, I needed about 170 corks. Um, you wanna have some extras. So of course you're gonna separate them um, to what color you need. So let's see, for the blue, I needed about, um, this is 28 quarts here, so seven by four. And so I dyed about 30 quarts because you want to have some extras in case they don't come out great. You have a couple extras to work with. So I dyed 30 blue quarts. Um, then for the red, I dyed 75 red quarts and I used 72. And then for the undyed ones, there's 65 here. So that's the white stripes, the undyed ones. Um, of course, before you do any gluing, you're gonna let those corks dry. They don't take very long to dry. Um, I, you can arrange them any way you want. I wanted the pictures or the words to show. Um, you can do it anyway. You don't have to have it. I was kind of meticulous on that. I didn't want the same ones next to each other so I that that's why I said I kind of, kind of arranged it all um, ahead of time and you just start at the top row you do want to hang it over a little bit um, maybe I can show you how the back looks that might help so you do want to hang it over as you can see they're over a little bit on the edges here so you want to hang it over so then you don't have to cut that side only this side so you start over in the corner just hang it over a little bit and just keep going right along uh, it's very simple um, like I said you don't need a lot of glue if I can do this anybody can do this and um, of course yours might be different than mine um, and you don't need to be perfect um, I found that you know if it, this edge is a little longer than the other one it's folk art so it kind of doesn't have to be perfect and it shouldn't be perfect. So, and then after all the corks have been um, glued down, I kind of waited a while, a uh, few hours before I did any cutting of the board and then just trim the board, um, the edge here. I don't know if you can see, just trimmed it. Um, and that was it. Um, and I, if you were, um, to put this outside, I probably would spray it with some type of water repellent, um, some type of coating. So I would, I would imagine you would need to do that. I have not done that. Um, I, I'm sure you could. Uh, mine, like I said, is going to stay inside on the mantle, but you could um, definitely waterproof it. Um, and uh, that's it. So I hope you try this. It's a great project you could do with your kids and um, I hope you enjoyed hearing about it and good luck with your folk art flag. Bye!